Tomorrow morning, we're going to start a show. We're going to rehearse for five weeks and we're going to open on schedule time. And I mean schedule time. From day one, we looked different than anything else on television. We had so many wonderful experiences working with so many amazing people. You're going to work days and you're going to work nights and you're going to work between time. It truly is sort of one of the things I'm most proud of in my life. We were just in the right place at the right time. We're going to have a show. I was charged with starting Turner Classic Movies. I came in January of 1993 to Atlanta from New York. I was coming to run TNT. Halfway through my first year, Scott and Ted said, we need to start a classic movie network. Nobody said what it was gonna be, what the tenants of it was gonna be, it was just, you figure it out. They weren't asking me, they were telling me, <laughs> you need to do this. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. It was gonna be a network that was going to be the home for this incredible classic movie library. We have to think Ted, Ted Turner, because he bought that core library. Rose, the RKO library, MGM, and the pre-1948 Warner Brothers movies. What Ted Turner did was at the time considered Ted's folly. I mean, people really thought he had lost his mind. Why would anybody want these old movies? But Ted Turner knew better. There were a lot of ideas floating around about the name of the channel. We thought about TNT Classic, TNT 2, because ESPN 2 and others had started. I, in my role, was heading up an effort to do focus groups. Come on in. On what we were going to call this channel. But then one day we got a memo, and it said the name of the new channel will be called Turner Classic Movies. And it was initialed R-E-T, Robert Edward Turner. Is it my imagination, or is it getting crowded here? So Ted called the shots on the name of the channel. Call off the focus groups. We're calling it Turner Classic Movies. The business was a fledgling business. We were the new classic movie channel on the block. Nobody had heard of us. Turner what? It only had one million cable homes. The universe was like 90 then. So you get one shot at making an introduction. I used to go all across the United States with our cable sales guys selling the network individually. We would say to a cable operator, if you launch TCM, we'll come there, we'll bring a star, we'll do an event and make the launch exciting for the people who lived in that market. We actually did a win Tony Curtis for a day promotion. Hello. Hello. Please. If you win, you could bring Tony Curtis to your market and to your subscribers. Move those hips, honey. One of the most hilarious things we ever did. He was such a trooper and went full tilt with it. Action! Hold your own private screening with Tony in your living room. Who is my name? I called my mother and I said, Mom, I had dinner with Tony Curtis and it was just like an unbelievable opportunity. Say, Tony! Tony! <laughs> My predecessor had a bell, a big bell outside, and every time we got a call that somebody was launching, he'd ring the bell. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart strings. From the moment I saw him, I fell. Very quickly, I sort of knew what I wanted this channel to be. The idea of the greatest movies of all time, all the time. 24 hours, seven days a week, uncut and commercial free. The way the movies were originally meant to be seen, colorized movies did not have a home on this channel. And that was a little bit of a battle with my boss, Ted Turner. Ted was a big believer in colorization, and we really felt that there was no way that we would be taken seriously. Getting him to kind of relent, that was a big support from him. We really were dedicated to trying to deliver the movie looking the best it possibly could, if we could. It wasn't always easy. Letterboxing was something that became really important to us. We felt we had to have the versions that you would have seen in the theater. We were constantly having people thinking we were taking something away from them or doing something weird to their TV, but we were trying to let you see everything that the cinematographer and the director wanted you to see. You know, I remember getting letters from Martin Scorsese saying, oh, by the way, it's available in Letterbox," And, you know, he was right, and we would search it out and air it. So we had some proponents like him who would keep us on our toes. Please remember that you're seeing the entire picture. No prisoners! No prisoners! We presented it in a way that was super smart. There was research that was done that you didn't know about, like 
wow, I can't believe that sort of stuff. I remember calling people to get pronunciations of their names and saying, I'm at Turner Classic Movies and we like to get things right here. Look, Herman, I'm in Hedy Lamar's shoe. Hedley. You know, I would always say, the channel has to be the most beautiful channel on television. We really decided that TCM as a brand really needed to embody the beauty and the magic and the complexity of the films themselves. We weren't just a vehicle to put movies up on a screen. We didn't want it to feel like TV. We really wanted to make it feel like a movie experience. We wanted what we made to really lean into the elements of film, the texture, the light, the grain, the atmosphere was really more about the story and the emotion that story elicits that we wanted to capture. The day we launched on April 14th, 1994, was in Times Square. I saw something that said, on this date in movie history, April 14th, 1894, the first public exhibition of a motion picture takes place in New York City, springtime, TCM. I thought right away, oh, that's got to be it. We shut down Times Square. We had a podium built. Robert Osborne spoke. I'm very proud to be a part of all of this. And Bob had a bunch of his classic movie star friends there. And then the big show was Ted getting up to talk. And he leans over and he says, is it Turner Movie Classics or Turner Classic Movies? So there goes my career before my eyes, because the chairman gets the name of the new network wrong. And now we're going to uh, start to... And he paused for like a split second, and I promise you it seemed like forever. Turner uh, Classic Movies. And he got it right. To this day, I don't know if he was just pulling our leg. We had this big pretend switch that Ted flipped. It was supposed to look like a real switch, and then he flipped it, and it kind of went boing, boing, boing. <laughs> Television's newest entertainment network. And then right after that, Ted's favorite movie came up, which was Gone with the Wind. It was a truly memorable experience. Hi, welcome to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Robert Osborne. I'm going to be your host right here. It was here. the first appearance on camera of anybody on the channel. And I had him come down the stairs, and I just needed an excuse to show off the set. We were all so proud of that set. Come join us and see not only great films and stars from the past, but also films from recent years. Robert was our only host at the time. He would fly to Atlanta, he lived in New York, and shoot for three days every other week. We shot 26 pieces each day. We did have writers, but he rewrote everything, made it more conversational. We spent so much time together. When TCM first started, we didn't have digital backups, so we had to do two perfect takes of every film. I think you're gonna love Turner Classic Movies, and. We're all going to be doing our best to keep you with us. This shot was up for the top. I'm kind of embarrassed by it today. We never brought him down the stairs again. Oh, you've torn your coat. When we launched the network, so many of the classic stars were still alive. So we worked with everybody. I think they were all in a point in their careers where people were starting to not remember who some of these people were. And then when they came to Atlanta, they were treated like royalty. James Garner was just so excited to be in a state with low cigarette taxes. He's like, could somebody run out and get me a couple cartons? One of our crew guys was just so excited at the prospect of being able to say I went out and bought cigarettes for Jim Garner. June Allison came up to hear on me and she said, I love your suit. I said, thank you, June. She said, I want your suit. I said, well, maybe I can call the store and see if I can get it. She said, no, I want your suit. What a joy to interview people like Conrad Hall, Ricardo Montalban, Arthur Penn, extraordinary. I got to spend a week with Norman Lloyd. I just adored him. He had the best stories. Every once in a while, he would catch himself and say, I've told you this before, haven't I? And I said, you have, but I, I want to hear it again. These were people. They're not just stars on a pedestal. These were genuinely funny characters, and it was just amazing to have a front seat. What are you gonna do, Charlie? Declaration of principles. <laughs> Don't smile, Jedediah. Got it all written out. 
The legacy of TCM can be traced back to a mantra or a mission statement we did. It was almost overwhelming to have this treasure trove of thousands of movies that hadn't been out there before. There were so many ideas. The mantra was really a way to get everybody sort of aligned. Every word needed to matter. TCM believes that movies matter. TCM is dedicated to the art of film, the value of movies, and the intelligence of our audience. TCM is the guardian of classic movies, the keeper of a cultural flame. That one little piece of paper was one of the most important things I'm most proud of. You look at it today and it holds up 100%. I'd like to keep that particular piece of paper myself. I have a hunch it might turn out to be something pretty important. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, TCM! 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 I still feel that after 30 years, TCM is as active and as vibrant as it was when it started. We love TCM! The fans, they've been so loyal to us, and they've been there from day one. We were a family. It almost makes me cry. You just felt like you were doing good work. You were bringing joy to people. You felt like you were doing something really important. Ted Turner created an avenue for people to see some of the greatest art created in our lifetimes. I'll forever be proud to have been associated with that. It's one of a kind that is just not ever going to be replicated. We're all lifers. The smartest, most creative, most fun place to be. The standard allows it to grow and to be this living, breathing thing. That's the legacy of what we built. And we hope it lasts a long time. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship.